precision agriculture is the key to sustainable and profitable food production today and will only increase in importance going into the future. As farmers increasingly turn to technology to manage every aspect of their operation, having skilled people on the front line will be more important than ever. While this field is typically dominated by men, the four young women that follow are proving it doesn't take feats of strength and speed to help farmers and retailers be successful in the precision ag field. It takes preparation, confidence, and smarts. I grew up on a farm. We um, raise cotton, corn, soybeans. I'm the sixth generation. So my role as precision coordinator within H&R means that I act as the communicator among the precision ag group. We have seven precision specialists across our company and we're fairly spread out. The closest specialist to me is about an hour to 70 miles away. So I'm the communicator amongst the group. I make sure that everyone has what they need as far as documents, training, um, support guides, anything that comes from the reps that needs to be sure it's distributed. And then also when it comes to internal processes, I help to guide and oversee that we're doing business internally as efficiently as possible uh, to make all of our lives a little easier. Um, here in Brownsville, I also service customers. So I go out on farms with, um, with our technicians or I go out on farms to address specific guidance issues that someone may have, yield monitors on, combines, um, any other harvesting issues that may arise or planter clutches and, and just setting up all the electronics on machinery falls under my realm. Being a woman in precision in this area has been fairly easy. Um, a lot of the customers have known me my whole life and then I've had some great mentors that have been females in the ag industry here in West Tennessee that have, that have paved the way for me to be on the farm. I think my favorite part of it is when I go out to a customer that I've known a while and they, they've seen me grow up but they've not necessarily seen me on the farm because when you're busy you're in your own little world on your own farm and I get out there and I tell them I need to run the planner or I need to run this to make sure that we've got it working right. Okay, but I need to ride with you because I'm not real sure that you know how to drive this. And it's like, what? <laughs> I just fixed it. Surely I can drive it too. One lesson I've learned working at the farm is that work doesn't stop until the crop is out. And an understanding that when, when something is broken down on that farmer's operation and he's in the middle of planting or harvesting or spraying that, that you're affecting his livelihood. You know, to some of us, it's, it's still a job, but when it comes to our customers, it's their livelihood. And if we don't get out there and take care of them and get them fixed in a timely manner, they may miss a spraying window. They may have a rain cloud 10 minutes away that's gonna stop their operation when they could have been running and gotten that extra acre or two. And it's really important to be timely. And, and that's really something that we've learned at the farm and it's carried over into my work here at the dealership. I grew up on a cranberry farm in northern Wisconsin. Uh, my grandfather bought that marsh in 1939, um, scalped the trees off, uh, dug the ditches with shovels, uh, the first batch, and, and eventually had a, you know, a better, better machinery as, as he went on. But my grandpa and then my father have farmed that um, since 39, um, grew up pulling maple trees and pulling willow trees and uh, kind of testing everything and then seeing how we could grow for cranberries best. So I went to the University of Minnesota for Biological Systems and Agricultural Engineering. And after grad school, um, I came out to join Family Farms Group, where I've been working, I guess, for the last four years. I love a lot of things about my job. I love the agronomy peer group. I love getting to travel to a lot of different farms and learn a lot about many different crops. Um, cranberries are really fantastic, but there's a lot of really you know, brilliant things about corn, and there's really neat things about cotton that I had no idea about growing up. Um, and so getting to learn a lot of different crops, it's really satisfying to be able to give people an answer. This is, this is what this cost, this is what this cost, this is what this made, this is what this made. Um, it's really satisfying to get to be out in the field with farmers because you know, there had been kind of a slow start with precision ag and a lot of people are like, yeah, can that really help me? Um, getting them to the point where they can say, okay, good, finally we're getting something out of this and I just got a piece of actionable information. That makes me feel really good. 
because um, you, you know it's there. People used to say, oh, I, you know, precision agriculture, you must be really smart. And I'd say, oh, a little bit smart, but mostly really patient. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of grinding that goes on, um, but, but it's all worth it in order, to, in order to help people grow better crops. So I did not grow up on a farm. Um, my grandparents had horses and donkeys and some other animals, and I really kind of fell in love with the rural life, I guess you could say, and really just wanted to continue in that. So when I graduated from high school, I ended up going to UC Davis and got my bachelor's in animal science and management and then a master's in agricultural economics and decided that I did not want to be a vet. I wanted to be around my own healthy animals and not everyone else's sick ones. So I start, sort of started looking around for something else to do that was in the industry. And I found agricultural and resource economics. And as part of that, um, part of the, that classwork, I also did some internships um, with our precision technologies department at school. And that's really where I fell in love with with Precision Ag. I've been an Ag Leader just a little over three years now. I cover Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. And my primary responsibility is to develop the dealer network. By that I mean sign new dealers, recruit new dealers, um, and also develop the dealers that I do have, including sales training and business planning. I think the most important thing that I do is to establish an open two-way communication, develop that honesty and trust between myself and my dealers and also to help my dealers do that with their customers. Being a woman in agriculture has been really great actually. I am happy to say that I haven't experienced any kind of discrimination or anything like that. Most of the farmers and dealers and everyone else that I deal with is very respectful and really wonderful people. South Dakota State University has a long history in precision agriculture. An agronomy professor worked with an ag engineering professor many years ago to offer the first class with a precision ag focus. As the years passed, the number of classes grew and the university started offering a minor in precision agriculture in 2014. The rapid increase in enrollment was a clear signal from students that they wanted to be a part of a highly skilled workforce in precision agriculture. One of those students is Lexi Schmidt. Currently a senior, Lexi is enrolled in the university's Agricultural Systems Technology program with a minor in precision agriculture. We are a corn and soybean operation. Um, it's my dad and my uncle who farm together. I just kind of needed to figure out a way to move back to the farm and I needed to find a way to make myself unique. And so I started looking into ag schools and what degrees they offered. And um, I saw the ag systems technology degree and I thought that would be a good fit for me. What I like most about being involved with the tech related field is being involved with all aspects of agriculture. Um, I get the hands on with new precision ag things. Uh, I get to be involved with farmers. I get to help my dad improve our operation. So I just get the best of all worlds. I've had two internships so far and I, I really, I think it's helped me decide what part of agriculture I want to be involved in. I would like to be directly involved with farmers, so being at a dealership, and then my ultimate goal is to be the fifth generation farmer in our family. Over the next three years, the USDA projects that there will be nearly 16,000 annual openings in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, all of which encompass the precision ag field. Whether it's implementing a nutrient management plan, installing precision equipment, developing maps, collecting soil samples, or providing training, it's clear Heather, Allison, Hope, and Lexi are a critical piece to the precision ag puzzle. Going forward, we must continue to encourage and nurture more young women who demonstrate an aptitude in these areas and make them aware of the myriad opportunities and rewards in precision agriculture. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.